First of all, how lucky are we that Benita is adding the League Apps team? Thank you, Benita. All right, so we have one last speaker here, and this is not an easy challenge. I want you to follow a Basketball Hall of Famer, a Coach of the Year, and an Olympic gold medalist. Uh, that's pressure. Now, if anyone was here in 2019, they know that he is up for the challenge. So if you're in the front row, just get ready. Um, I want to bring to the stage uh, Francis from TPH Academy, he's the COO there, and uh, he's gonna to talk about high performance in the way that only Francis can, uh, which is synonymous with the reputation of what TPH is all about. So Francis, stage is yours. Thanks, Jeremy. Well, thanks for putting that thought in my head about the first three speakers. I was trying to forget about that. They're gonna quickly find I don't need a microphone. There's no clicker up here, so you've already set me up in the back there for failure in this presentation. No, I'm just kidding. I'll steal it from you, and then we'll dive in. Good to go. Oh, now we're dropping stuff. All right. Everybody, on behalf of our CEO and our company in TPH, Alan Kiso, who couldn't be here today, he really wanted to be here, but he had a prior commitment. And our, I can't believe I'm saying this, over 150 full and part-time team members across the country, 15 academy locations, 24 U.S. cities. Thanks so much for being at this event, and a huge thanks to League Apps for inviting us back to present here in 2022. Before I get cranking, I just want to acknowledge my two teammates that are with us here at the Next Up conference. Matt Cook is an executive director for us, in Minnesota. He won a Stanley Cup with the Pittsburgh Penguins back in 2009. What I love about Matt is he knows what championship culture and championship teams look like because he's been a part of one. And Jordan Petrus is one of our other executive directors. Jordan played four years of college hockey at Brown, had a great minor professional career, got his MBA while playing overseas. He's wicked smart super intelligent, and he's got a ton of passion for youth sports. So I just want to acknowledge my two team members. You're crazy if you don't spend at least two to three minutes with these two guys before you leave New York City here today. Okay, so League Apps asked me to talk about what high performance means. And with it being 2022, the first thing I did to get my brain going is what most of us do. I went to the Google machine. And I typed in definition of high performance, just to get my brain stimulated. And here's what came up. High performance is faster, better, and more efficient than others. This is just my opinion. I like some of it, but I don't like all of it. Because I think there's a danger in youth sports when we have kids comparing them selves up against others. See, I come from the John Wooden School of Leadership. If I could go back and spend 15 minutes with a celebrity or a hero or an icon, I'd take 15 minutes with this guy and pick his brain for all 15 minutes. John Wooden says, and most of you know this, success is peace of mind achieved through self-satisfaction and knowing that we have made the effort to be the best that we are capable. So if we take Google plus the wizard of Westwood, I come up with this. High performance is maximizing potential, whether that's here or here, day in and day out. Now, how do we create an environment that promotes high potential, high, per high potential, high performance behaviors? Outcomes, results. I want to get you thinking here today. For me, it's all about trust. We got to get our athletes to trust us. We got to get our athletes to follow us.
Because as was pointed out yesterday, they don't care how much we know till they know how much we care about them. How the heck do we do this? There's probably 50 things that we can do to establish trust, to create high-performance outcomes, to have a high-performance culture. And for me, it starts with this. We have to communicate with our athletes in a radically candid manner. Radical Candor is a great book. I think it should be required reading for coaches by Kim Scott, one of my team mates in TPH, Jacqueline Kiso, turned me on to this book, Radical Candor. Radical Candor is based on four things. Number one, it's about just communicating your viewpoint. It's not the law. It's just my viewpoint. Number two, radical candor is about recognizing that as coaches, it is not what we say that matters, but it's what our players hear and absorb that truly does. Radical candor is about caring deeply about our athletes. Caring about the player, but caring about the human being. And Radical Candor is about, and this is one of my favorite ones, challenging them directly. It's about providing hard, tough, straight ahead feedback when the situation requires that. Four things. If we are going to care deeply, challenge directly, and have Radical Candor, we've got to create touch points with our athletes. How do you as coaches create touch points with your athletes every day? I'm just going to give you a few ideas. Feel free to steal any one of them that you want. You might think some of them are crazy. Have 30 second quick hit conversations with every athlete you work with every day. If every athlete leaves the field, leaves the rink, leads, leaves the gym, and can say when they get in the car with mom and dad, the coach spent 30 seconds with me today talking about me, think about how good that's gonna make them feel. Build an impact chart. So the night before practice, when you're meeting with your staff, go through every player on your roster. What coach is talking to that player tomorrow? What are you talking to them about? How long are you gonna spend with them? And how did it go? And then whether you do it in a Google Sheet, in a notebook, you have a fancy $10 million app, take notes and review those notes daily. It's amazing what you'll learn about your athletes and how much better of a coach or a leader that you'll be. Break your season down into five or 10 game segments and meet with your athletes at the end of each segment. How did you do? How did you think you did? What can I do as a coach to better help you maximize your potential and get better. Do daily wellness surveys. We do that in TPH. We have our own performance app. We ask them questions when they get to the academy in the morning. How's your mood today? What parts of your body are sore? How many hours of sleep did you get last night? One of the reasons why we do that, so we can use the data. Ready for this? This is brilliant, eh, Cookie? To have conversations with them. Hey, your mood's been down seven out of the last eight days. Everything okay at home? Want to chat about anything? And the last one's my personal favorite. I stole this one many years ago from a great coach. The day of the month that they were born, have a meeting with them. So today's October 7th. If you were born on the 7th of the month, on that day, knock on the coach's door, that's your one-on-one -on -one with your coach. Might take two minutes, might take five minutes. Meet with them on the day of the month they were born. By the end of the year, you'll have met with them nine, 10, 11, 12 times if you're year round. Radical candor. We gotta communicate that way so we can create trust. And that way we're on the path to having a high performance environment. Number two, Jeff from Golden State yesterday talked about we got to get them addicted to working on their game. I love that. I, I stole that one. I'm using that one from now until the end of time. To get them addicted to work on their game, 
they got to want to come work with us every day. To me, the key is we have to foster a safe environment for our athletes. In safe environments, I believe acceptance is the prevailing attitude. We have to teach our athletes, as young as this big right here, to appreciate the similarities in one another, but gosh darn it, to respect the differences in one another now more than ever. Because who am I? I'm just a guy in a suit that played a little bit of hockey. We got people in this room that have won championships, have done high-level things in sport. I think you would agree. Some of the best teams we've ever been a part of, everybody's pulling the rope in the same direction, but the team's diverse. Not everybody looks the same. Not everybody talks the same. Not everybody came from the same background. We have to foster a safe environment where they respect the differences in one another so key. So a couple questions for you as you sit here listening to me babble. Do you subscribe as a leader to the golden rule or the platinum rule? The golden rule says, we all know it, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The platinum rule says, treat others the way they want to be treated. In other words, get to know them, ask questions, be inquisitive, build a relationship, figure out what makes them tick. There's no right or wrong answer here. You've got to think about this. I like the modified platinum rule. I invented that term. Maybe I should call it like the diamond rewards rule or something. I don't know. Treat others in a way that makes them feel comfortable and a part of the team. I am big as a coach on second chances, third chances, fourth chances, and fifth chances if you have a bad shift. If you play a bad game, we talk about it, you go back out there, you try again. But bully someone, humiliate someone, disrespect someone, I will still care about you. I'll still try to help you, but you can't be on my team. Those are my non-negotiables, right, wrong, or indifferent. That's just me. What are yours as a coach? Whatever your non-negotiables are, Make sure we communicate them on day one, parents and players, and we see it through every day. Here's another question I want to ask you. Are you going to treat your athletes equally, fairly, or differently? If you haven't determined that as a leader, that's okay. Start talking to your peers about it before you leave New York City today. Are you going to treat them equally, Fairly or differently. I don't know if any of you have ever seen the clip. But I think it's a football life from Jimmy Johnson, legendary coach of the Dallas Cowboys. And Jimmy Johnson tells a story. One day I was leading a video session, and I look in the back of the room, and Joe somebody, the backup to the backup to the backup, was sleeping. So I went back to the room, and I said, Joe, apparently you're not getting enough sleep. Why don't you go home and go to sleep, and I cut it. Well, somebody asked Jimmy Johnson, well, what would you do if you look in the back of the room and Troy Aikman's sleeping? He said, it's simple. I'd say, Troy, wake up. <laughs> I don't know which one's right or wrong, but you've got to decide. Equal, fair, or different, and you've got to be consistent every day. For me, anti-accepting, anti-safe behaviors, those are non-negotiable. Because as coaches, we are the gatekeepers of our culture. And if we're not prepared to accept that, we probably shouldn't be doing what we're doing. We have to foster a safe environment so that they trust the environment, so that they have a chance to perform at a high standard and, and get high performance results every day. Here's the last one. Offer player-centered, enthusiastic direction. Today's generation, they want to know what to do. They want to know how to do it. They want to know why it's relevant. And most of them have their radio dial tuned in to WIIFM. What's in it for me? 
I don't know that this is a bad thing because Jonesy from Steel Sports yesterday in your breakout group, I love what you said. Jonesy said, today's generation is still willing to work hard. They just need meaning and purpose. And they probably need to be reminded of that every day. Do we enthusiastically coach them, lead them, guide them, even if, as Bob Knight would say, it's enthusiastically critical? Do we bring enthusiasm every day to the job? Because I believe enthusiasm gets their attention. It gets them leaning up in their chair. Then, like, if you're an idiot, it doesn't mean anything. But at least it gets their attention. What we do with our enthusiasm, that's another story. Do we do what Tanisha just said? Do we build them up with it? Or do we build them down? But enthusiasm does get their attention. I want to ask you a couple questions. I want to get you thinking. As a coach, as a leader, are you a Duracell drainer? Or are you the Energizer Bunny? Duracell drainers walk in the room and no enthusiasm. No jam, bad body language. They suck the life out of everyone in their grasp. Or are you the energizer buddy? Do you walk in a room early, dressed for success, fired up? Which are you? You gotta choose. If you wanna be an energizer buddy, here's two things I think you can do that could really help. Number one, greet them at the door. Be the first person at practice and let them see you every day as the first one there. Sets the tone. Number two, Win or lose, pat them on the back when they leave. And let them know that today is done, and as John Wayne once said, tomorrow is now the most important thing in life. Let them know that the sun will come up, and you will have a plan as the leader to help them get better. Another question I want to ask you. This is wicked simple. Would you want to play for you? If you were a player, would you want to play for you? A National Hockey League coach once said to me, if you want to be successful as a coach, he said, you got to act like a coach, but you got to think like the players. Never stop thinking about what you would think or see or hear or feel if you had their skates on, their cleats on, their boots on if you were sitting in their position. It at least provides great perspective. Last one on this. Do, do you create opportunities every day for your athletes to self-evaluate? That is so, so key. Do you provide enthusiastically, do you provide opportunities for them to look at themselves and maybe give you some feedback? I don't know if any of you have heard of this, but there is a push-pull technique in coaching. We all know what the push means. Get moving, skate faster, train harder. Come on, you got this. The pull technique is something different because it says, as Swin just mentioned, the pull technique requires us to listen, which is not always a strength of us coaches, right? We wanna, we wanna give the speech. This is a one-way conversation right now because it's set up that way. But it's, it's not when we're out there having a coffee. Do you listen to your athletes two to three times more than you speak? Do you ask questions of your athletes at two to three times the rate that you provide direction? Think about that before you leave New York here today. High performance is maximizing potential. Just my opinion, day in and day out. Trust is key to fostering a high performance culture. We gotta have radical candor. We gotta care deeply, challenge directly. We gotta foster a safe environment, an environment of acceptance. This is not easy, it's hard work. And we've gotta provide enthusiastic direction because it gets their attention. What we do from there, TBD to be determined. In TPH, our core purpose is to lead the world in the holistic development of student athletes advancing in and beyond the game the next generation of impact players. If we can help you in any way execute your core purpose, whatever it is, 
shoot us a note or find us before we leave. Like Brian Lickback said in his opening presentation, we're all students of the game. Minimally, let's keep in touch and see what we can learn from one another. If you were here in 2019, you know that I like to end all of my team meetings with a one, two, clap in unison. Because to be a team, you have to have one heartbeat. But before we do that, I want to leave you with this. I think I shared this in 19. Three years later, I believe it to be even more true. Ironically, it's from a wooden book. No written word, no spoken plea can teach the youth what they should be. Nor all the books on all the shelves, it's what the teachers are themselves. That's you, that's me, that's us, and that's freaking awesome. Huge thanks to League Apps. Let's keep doing our part to positively impact our athletes so that they love the game more when they leave us than when they got to us. And as League Apps would say, they'll want to play forever. Ready? One, two. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>